Welcome back! Welcome back to another video. You have to say Kuna Rasa. Babe. Welcome back! Kuna. No, I say welcome back and you say. I thought you say Kuna Rasa fam. No, welcome back, Kuna Rasa fam. That's what you say every time. You know what she's good with this? Some wonton chips. Yeah, you're right. This is gonna be hecka ghetto, but I just brought the whole bag with the with oh, the no. sauce. You can have that. Welcome to our mukbang, guys. We're eating some bussin Thai food. Um, bussin Thai food. I said bussin Thai food. That's the habanero pepper on top. Where? You literally just puts it right on top. That's wait. Why did I always think hot and pit? You don't have to add it on top if you don't that's want it. Actually, that's what makes it extra spicy. That's what I say, jalapenos. I always thought the jal habanero was green. Wonton chips. Hit. Ooh. With the dumpling sauce, I mean the duck sauce. Whoa, this got a chip. We got some Thai basil fried rice. My favorite thing. This Ooh. is some crunchy chili garlic. Look, the crunchy chili garlic. It focused. No, we're gonna give you guys some relationship advice. Some of that relationship advice. Relationship tips. Tips and tricks. These are our tips and tricks on how to have a good relationship. Hey! Matthew's a quiet mouse today, so. No, I'm munching. Nah, he a quiet mouse. The spice is right now getting to me. Holy cow. Really? Uh huh. Is that spicy? Like, I had a good chunk of that habanero. Man, you're supposed to mix it up. I tried. But it didn't work. Give, give them your relationship advice. Take it away. Actually, one of the biggest things, obviously, no relationship is perfect. You have to really learn what works for you guys and what doesn't work. And you learn that over time. I think that there's so many different things from being married for almost two years now that we've learned as time has gone on. And one of the biggest things, I think, is establishing that this is your new family. This is your new immediate family, which doesn't mean, okay, neglect both sides of your extended family, not at all. But what it means is like- And by immediate family, he means that you and your husband or you and your wife, you guys are your immediate family now. Or and whatever your parents, kids you have. Your, children, your parents, your great, like all those people are your ex extended family now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And not that you just completely block them out. I don't believe in that at all. No. I think you really have to appreciate your parents and your grandparents even after you get married and show them love. But that being said, you now have a new first priority when it comes to entering into a new family. And sometimes that can be a very difficult thing for couples, I think, mm -hmm. is separating from their old family mm -hmm. and entering into a new one. Leaving and cleaving? Yes, leaving and cleaving. I think that could be a very hard thing. <laughs> and what worked for us, what worked for us in that specific area was really being able to communicate with each other that, hey, we love both families. All we needed to reassure each other of was that, hey, we're gonna try our hardest for each other's family, but what first matters is that we try our hardest for our family. Um, there's, you know what I'm saying? I think we had that conversation within the first couple of months is because we're both, we both love our families, we love each other's families, you know, we both loved our families and we had to have that conversation where it's like, okay, let's, let, let's be um, realistic. This is our first family now. We have to make sure that we are not actually prioritizing our extended family's needs over our own needs. Mm -hmm. So that is one of the biggest areas I feel that couples struggle. We've even heard it with some of our friends with the whole family situation and how they're still working on it. And that was something we had to work on within like the first six months. And after that change, it became honestly easier to even love each other's families even more. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't know how to explain it, but once we established our foundation here, it was so much easier to just mm -hmm. do that. So if you don't do that, you will like, you make room for the other person to build resentment for the other person's family, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Like if you don't actively keep that person first in your life, you leave room for there to be resentment towards each other's families and you don't want that. Cause there should always be a healthy relationship between your family, but the healthy relationship starts with the fact that you know that this is your immediate family and you operate that this is my immediate family. You guys are my extended family. Mm -hmm. Another huge thing is just making sure in relationships that you are showing like we were just talking about, your spouse's family that you love them. Mm -hmm. That is huge. I think 
sometimes people give up so fast they have an issue with their uh, their person's family and they're like you know what we're done we're not gonna even work on it we're not gonna even try and i think that's so wrong i think that you really need to if you if i really love carly i'm really gonna try my hardest to her family yeah i'm gonna try my best even if there is a conflict same thing vice versa if there's a conflict in my family you really need to love each other's families when you're married because mm -hmm. then it's the opposite you can't only just focus on your own family and forget everybody else. Yeah. I think that that's a very wrong family. thing. You need family, you need friends. Oh, we're gonna get into another question, speaking of that. I th what do you think about that? Like in terms of what are some ways that you feel that you should be there for each other's families? I think just like, I don't know, show any interest. Show that you care. You're not, you're not just there because you're married to this person, but. So how do you do that? I mean, I hang out with your family. Yeah. And like do the things that they like to do, talk to them, show interest in their life. Yeah. I think, I feel like it's like also similar to like, I mean, they're not your friends, but it's similar to a friendship. Mm -hmm. You're just getting to know somebody. And like, do the things they like to do, care about them, you know? Break that wall of like trying to be perfect yeah. for yourself. For real. You can't do that forever. The one thing I want to bring up to you, because you're super passionate about this. Why do you think it's so wrong to, right when you get married, to just forget about everyone else and only focus on yourself and your partner and just block out all friends and block out all family? What do you think are the downfalls of doing that because long term? You're build you're you're burning bridges. Like my grandma always told me when I was a kid, even if you have problems with people, do not burn bridges because you're gonna need those people in at the end of the day. Also, I was talking about how important it is to kind of keep your friendships while you're married. That's kind of oh, oh that's was. what you were asking. Yeah. So I was saying, that's oh, yeah, what I was saying. I, I understand what you're saying, sorry. So recently, I know we've been talking and you've been we've been expressing to each other. Oh yeah, you have how, to have friendships. How like your friendships and your family and in terms of how when some people get married and they ghost everyone. Mm -hmm. And it's just, like it's that. just wrapped. It's just like, okay, I'm married now. Like I'm a ghost to everyone. And then they try and talk to you after like, you know, 10 months or after a Month, year. Yeah. And so and why like, do our you- Our friendship has died, bro. Like, yeah, yeah. So why do you feel that that's wrong in terms of like, right when you get married, just ghosting everybody and feeling like you don't need anyone except for your spouse? Because what do you think are the- at the end of the day- Long-term effects. Your spouse, like you guys are one, don't get me wrong. But at the end of the day, your spouse is still the opposite gender. And something about the Very same true. gender will never understand you to the fullest the way that the, the, something about the opposite gender, they'll never understand you to the fullest the way that the same gender can. You know? But even the same gender can't understand you to the fullest. Mm -hmm. Because there's things that the opposite gender, like we're right. married. There's like, there's like pieces that. Honestly, at the end of the day, only God can understand you to the fullest. Mm -hmm. um, Cause even the same gender, there's things that they will never know about you that I know. Of course. Because yeah. we're one. Um, my opinion on that is but that- I was, But I was, sorry, I was just saying that like, you know, you need the opposite gender too. Like, I mean, you need similar gendered friends because like, you can edify each other, grow together. Literally in the Bible says like, iron, iron sharpens iron, like, you know? Yeah, no, and I think we made sure when we got married to not just ghost our friends, to not right. just act like they didn't exist, to not do that. And that was one of the things that made our wedding feel so special. Mm -hmm. And we talk about that a lot. We talk about how, we and uh, we wanted our friends to be part of our wedding. We wanted our friends to be part of our individual lives, mm -hmm. not just Matt and Carly, but literally Matt individually and Carly individually. And that's why at our wedding it just felt like, you know, a lot of our uh, bridesmaids and our groomsmen mm -hmm. were crying, not because of um, you know just such an emotional oh, we're moment them or, or anything like that. It was because they actually got to be a part of our relationship. Our journey. And I think that is a huge thing. And especially after is like allowing them to be part of your relationship too, even after you're married. Carly's really going to town with this I'm thing. sorry, um, duck sauce is a buzzing. But you know, as life has gone on and Carly and I have realized like, you can't just only think, okay, I just need my spouse and, and that's it. And mm -hmm. not have any other relationships. I think that Carly and I have really tried our hardest to build relationships with other people outside of our marriage. And it's been great, mm -hmm. honestly. So I think that no matter what, you need to keep your friends in your just, life and yeah. your family. I think it's so unhealthy when I see relationships and like couples that are only friends with each other and they have no other friends. Yeah. Because like, sometimes it's hard to make friends. I understand that, but I think if you're actively like, I don't really need other friends. Yeah, something's wrong there. Especially as like a married couple. You need community. Yeah. Like, even if you're married, you still need community. That doesn't I think, change. I think that's what happens sometimes. Is like, let me being disrespectful, talking about food in my mouth. <laughs> 
That's right. I was doing the same thing. I think that's what happens a lot of times is you get married and then um, you forget to prioritize that time with your friends mm -hmm. and you end up feeling lonely. And that's why it's so important. Like, not that you need people to fill your voids. No, mm -hmm. but you, God put people on this earth for a reason. God, God didn't just put you and your spouse mm -hmm. on this earth. There's a reason why there's other people. You we need have community. to, we need community, bro. So I, that's why I encourage people to go to church every week. Because mm -hmm. like something about not just the worship and not just the message, but something about being with other believers and mm -hmm. other people in general, like. Even Jesus had friends. Yeah, man. Like he you had need disciples. friends. Another thing is marrying a person that will not take you away from your friends. Mm -hmm. That is huge because it's different. Me and Carly have, we, I don't think it's any, like never we've really argued about like, you're spending too much time with your friends or this and that. No. We found the balance where it's like, we know we need to spend time with each other's friends, but at the same time, we have to make time for us. That's mm -hmm. first. First yeah. is making time for God, but making time for us is first before our friends. Mm -hmm. But we found this kind of rhythm where after we realize, okay, what works for us, we're not gonna limit each other from hanging out with each other's friends. Mm -hmm. And actually, the best thing, one of my favorite things I love about our relationship is we both said it to each other. Like, we'll both actually correct each other if um you haven't talked to your friend in a while, mm -hmm. or I haven't talked to my friend. Like, she'll be like, have you talked to this person? Or have you called them in this? And I'm like, oh man, I haven't even thought about that. You know what, let me do that. Same thing to her, I'll be like, Carly, did you did you talk to this person? Or have, how long has it been? Even family to too, we'll do that for each other's family. Like, have you called your family? Like, yeah. have you called your, your siblings? Like have you talked to them? No, and that's so important to be with someone like that because then there's the opposite of a person that just wants to tie you down and make you not be around anyone. And I well, think, yeah, that, I think that's also, not good. We're, we have personalities that we are the last people that ever want to live in regret one day. Be like, mm -hmm. oh, I didn't call my family or I didn't call this person. Yeah. Another thing. Dang, I'm really grubbing over here. Pomegranate juice is undefeated. Mm -hmm. it, it really is. And it's is. also very good for you guys. Also so good. But don't yeah. get pom. Go Dang. to your local, go to, really your, hitting on pom. Sorry, go to your local farmer's market and get you some natural pomegranate juice. Make sure you scan it with the Yucca app. Make sure there's no preservatives or none of that in there. Mm -hmm. Get that, oh, so good for you. It's very good for gut health. Yucca better sponsor that. Yucca better sponsor that. So another thing that is huge in the Christian community is like the idea of like submission and headship and mm -hmm. That I think it really goes both ways. I feel that, and by both ways, I mean it. It also depends on the man. I think as a man, if you're just demanding, like you need to listen to me or you need to like submit to my authority. Like one thing I pray is that I am a man worth submitting to. Mm -hmm. That I am a man worth following, like by my wife. If you're not, then you really can't ask for it. I think that that's not right. I think you can't just say. I'm gonna act however I want, and Carly, you know what? You just listen to everything. You submit to my plan. Mm -hmm. You need to be a man that a woman wants to submit to, mm -hmm. because if you're a man that just demands it, honestly, that's really wrong. Yeah. Something that I learned too is like people think that like because you're like the wife and you're the helper, you're supposed to be the helper that you have like no say in your life. If that makes sense, like yeah. you have to realize that being a helper is not just oh let me sweep over here for you, honey. I mean, that's like, that's nice, but both people can sweep. But I feel like it's more in like, how can I keep pushing you towards God? Or how can I help you in this situation? How can I be here for you? Like, how can I help you in that way? Not saying that you're not there for me, because you are, because we, as the leader, Matthew's leading by example. You know what I mean? Like you are- I want to lead in a way that you'd be proud to follow. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what I want. But they're also like, in the Bible where it talks about being a leader is being a servant. So, yeah. That's the leader role. And understanding that what Matthew says and like his leading, his leadership is something that he's thought about and he's understanding that that's the best thing for our family. And you have to respect that. If you respect your leader, then you'll respect what he has to say. Yeah, also submission in the today's world is not the same thing as submission in the Bible. Yeah. Like literally Jesus submitted to God. He was in under submission to the authority of God, so. Another thing we were talking about is conflict and like how to handle it mm -hmm. and that is something we definitely had to talk about within the past two years and like what works for us and what doesn't work for us and how we cannot bring things from our old homes into this new home mm -hmm. in terms of conflict specifically. Literally every single couple has conflict. I don't think there's a single couple you will ever meet that says their relationship is perfect. It's not true. But I've heard people be like, yeah, we never ever fight. And That's like, not possible. Yeah, I, feel it, like I also, think it's, it's one thing to know. a red flag though. Like you guys don't have any disagreeing thoughts. I think it's possible to not argue a lot. Yeah. I think it's impossible to never have conflict. I would ask, is your relationship then deep enough? Mm 
-hmm. because if you're never having conflict, you're avoiding something. Mm -hmm. But if you're having too much conflict, then <laughs> there's um, there? too much pride, I would say. Yeah. Like there has to be like a humility that takes place in your marriage, so. Keep talking, I need floss. I don't like doing this by myself, it's not the same. But no, yeah, that's something Carly and I have been talking about a lot recently, is just how important it is to make sure our tones are good, make sure that we are respecting each other when we argue. I think immediately, instead of being defensive and wanting to prove our point, we have to hear each other. And that goes for both parties, it has to be both the men and both the females doing that, so. I said both the men and females. I'm gonna say both the men and women. <laughs> Carly's literally dancing in front of the screen. What works for us is not rushing our arguments and taking our time to really get through it. And don't get me wrong, even with this advice we're giving, we sometimes make mistakes and we sometimes go back to our old ways and how we argue. And then you gotta remember to just pick yourself up and catch yourself so that it's not repeating. I'm literally talking about how... <laughs> Sorry. What is your opinion on conflict and how to handle it? Ditto. Bro, they want to know your thoughts. But those are my thoughts. We have to say we share thoughts. We are one. Yeah, but you also, well, one, but you also have a own, your own brain. I know, but though, I agree with everything you just said. I don't have any other thoughts about that. That's exactly my thoughts about it. We've talked about the same conversation how many times? We've had the same, we have 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 the same. Oh, another it. thing is like avoiding each other's triggers. Like, yeah. like I think it's like once you communicate what your triggers are, I always tell Cardi and we always say this, like if you really love someone, you'll try your hardest to avoid what triggers them. Right. You won't use it against them. Why do you want to trigger somebody? Yeah, so that is huge when it comes to conflict. So do you have anything to say? Like relationship mm -hmm. tips or never stop dating each other. Yeah, and be physically affectionate. Yeah. Because if you're not, then I get upset. <laughs> Never stop dating each other. I think it's nice like to understand your spouse's love language or whoever you're with, understand their love language, and understand that you loving them how you want to be loved is not the way that they might not want a... to be loved. Wait, where is this from? I tried this coffee shop. It's not good. You went there today? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm an actor. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, you're a bad actor. At Why that. can't you know? I want to be an actor. You actually do? Wait, we look at me and tell me you're being serious. You want to be an actor? Yeah, like, like I want to go on like, um, like Drake and Josh. All right. <laughs> Give me your best. There's a lot of controversy around Drake and Josh right now. Oh, sorry. It would be called Matt and Mosh. Really Make and Mosh. Okay, make a do like a skit, like a quick like your sad sad scene. You always have me do a sad scene. Can you? Okay, do like give a, me something I'm literally like naturally. Like a joyful scene. Yeah, that's easy. Okay. Be like what's up, man? Like we just found um, our daughter that was taken from us, and we're celebrating. I'd be like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> That was terrible. <laughs> First of all, you chose the darkest scene to act. <laughs> you psycho. Yeah, because nobody's reacted like, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, you're I, like, was, I would probably be like. I could be an actress for sure. Remember when I used to do the plays? That was a lead to a play one time. Who I can, who I can else cry. Is auditioning. Non actresses? No. <laughs> all that to say, get yourself some tofu, get yourself some pie you. Dude, I have a headache. Get yourself cheese. some wonton chips and some dumplings. I mean, some duck sauce. Heard? You heard. You heard it here first, folks. We should react to our first couple of videos because those videos are so funny. <laughs> yeah, that, I'd like to do that. They're That'd so funny. You know, our next video, we can react to our first YouTube video. All right, Kunrashes fam. We will see you next week. We love you and cherish you. All right, we love you guys. We'll Bye. see you next week. Bye.